What a great advantage a man can have over women, if he only knew what cold and calculating thoughts are going through her mind, while her eyes are brimming with tears. Men have been trained and conditioned by women, not unlike the way Pavlov conditioned his dogs into becoming their slaves. Instead of probing the depth of woman's mysterious psyche, mysterious only because there is nothing behind it, they should study their own psyche. It is quite incredible that men, whose desire for knowledge is unbounded in every other field, are really totally blind to these facts, that they are incapable of seeing women as they really are, with nothing else to offer but a vagina, two breasts. Someday it will dawn on man that woman does not read the wonderful books with which he has filled his libraries, and though she may well admire his marvelous works of art in museums she herself will rarely create, only copy. Women have preserved this baby look for as long as possible so as to make the world continue to believe in the darling, sweet little girl she once was, and she relies on the protective instinct in man to make him take care of her. When will women become civilized enough to stop mistreating men? When will they cease from training their lovers to become providers, merely because they have the power to do so? As long as they continue as they are, men have no alternative to polygamy. By the age of 12 at the latest, most women have decided to become prostitutes. Or, to put it another way, they have planned a future for themselves which consists of choosing a man and letting him do all the work. In return for his support, they are prepared to let him make use of their vagina at certain given intervals. There are men who carefully maneuver a large limousine out of the garage at 8 o'clock every morning. Others leave an hour earlier, traveling in a middle-class sedan. Still others leave when it is not yet light, wearing overalls and carrying lunch boxes to catch buses, subways, or trains to factories or building sites. By a trick of fate, it is always the latter, the poorest, who are exploited by the least attractive women. If a young man gets married, starts a family, and spends the rest of his life working at a soul-destroying job, he is held up as an example of virtue and responsibility. The other type of man, living only for himself, working only for himself, doing first one thing, and then another simply because he enjoys it, and because he has to keep only himself, sleeping where and when he wants, and facing woman when he meets her, on equal terms and not as one of a million slaves, is rejected by society. The free, unshackled man has no place in its midst. A man who wants to gain power over a woman must follow the example of women and condition his sex drive. If he succeeds in becoming as cold as she, she can no longer bait him with sex into the role of provider. At most she could offer herself as an equal sex partner, as dependent on him as he is on her. If men could abstain from sex at judicious intervals, they might even succeed in normalizing the female sex drive, even make women desire them more than the other way around. Male aggressiveness consists in asking a woman to have intercourse and waiting for her to say yes or a definite no. Skillful tacticians enhance their chances of making out by distributing their attentions among several women at a time, one version of playing the field, thus increasing their statistical chances for a favorable answer, depending on circumstances. This is the height of male aggressiveness that is tolerated. Genuine aggressiveness, rape, men, have forbidden themselves by law.